Oh, this is so exciting for today's episode. Our guest today is writer-director Julia Morizawa. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. So you wrote and directed a uh, an Oscar-qualifying short film called Dragonfly. That's right? That's right. Okay, walk me through that because that sounds amazing. And I want to hear like a little bit of your origin story, kind of the birth of this project and, and how you've gotten to this far. Sure. Okay. How much time do we have? No, I'm just kidding. I, I can make it brief. I can make it brief. Okay. So Dragonfly is an animated short film about the Tokyo firebombing of March 9th through 10th, 1945. Wow. And it all started many years ago when I was in my early 20s and I got the bug. I don't know if you've gotten this to suddenly start researching my family history. Yeah, sure. And yeah, and part of that process back then was to interview my parents. And I asked my mom, who uh, is was born and raised in Japan, but is you know now long since been an American citizen. Mm -hmm. But um, I asked her at one point if she knew uh, like what her parents might have been doing during that time frame, you know, World War Two. And she said the only thing she had heard once when she was a kid was that at some point they were living in Tokyo, but there was a big fire. So they had to go back home to uh, the family farm in the country. Wow. And that was that. And then eventually when I wanted to start sort of writing a project inspired by this family history, I, I, I believe I literally just Googled like Tokyo 1945 fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was the first time I had heard about the Tokyo fire bombing. And there were like at least a hundred, there were many fire bombings in Tokyo and many other cities during that time. But right. this one was the most devastating. Um, it, it killed over a hundred thousand people in a single night. And um, uh, once I realized what my mom was talking about was not, you know, like a building fire, but a, a actual yeah. fire bombing, um, I started researching it more. And that's where this story was born. It's actually part of a, like I said, family heritage story, a much larger project that I've been working on, you know, on and off for years. But um, I knew that I wanted to be able to do a small bit of this story that I could self-produce. Yeah. So I adapted that particular section into a short film. And then um, I was really set on the, the firebombing segment of the story. And I did not, f I did not feel that it would be uh, super realistic to self-produce a live action version okay. of that. Yeah. And that's where the, the animation idea came into play. And it's kind of been, you know, from there, it just kind of, the, the ball got rolling and, I, I, you know, I didn't stop. So animation can't be cheap though. It, yeah, it's not, and it shouldn't be because it's very time consuming and yeah. um, animators are extremely talented. Um, I actually, I, hired my animation director, Maria Martellanero. Uh, she's been on the project with me since 2019. Mm -hmm. And then I believe about end of 2020, after I got, uh, I got the film crowdfunded, she mm -hmm. brought on um, her animation partner, Ava Benitez. Um, and it, most of the work was the two of them, just two wow. women, like in their own time and often in their spare time, because, you know, I, I couldn't afford to pay them to quit whatever or, you know, turn down Aww. other gigs or quit their side jobs. So they were very generous with their time. But, um, yeah, it, it took, you know, it took several years for us to get here. Yeah, but, I, I mean, it sounds like this was a passion project for everybody. They wanted to be involved. Yeah, they did. And I, I've always, one of my biggest fears was uh, that Maria, the animation director, that she would just kind of like one day she'd be like, Julia, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm done. Oh, no. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> but there were at least like one or two occasions where she was like, Julia, don't worry. I'm in it to the end, oh, you know, <laughs> um, where it was like getting tough or like, oh, what do I need? What, what can I do to help you? And um, toward the end, it, uh, I was able to bring on like two more um, animators that just came in the last couple few months to help them sort of meet meet a deadline so when you tell me about this i mean because the tokyo firebombing 
to me, it doesn't feel like it's really in the zeitgeist of the consciousness. Like, no, you never hear anybody ever talking about it. And it really, to me, kind of reminds me of like the Tulsa massacre where Mm. it's happened. It's this big thing that happened and nobody ever really acknowledges it. So I love the fact that you did this deep dive in your family. You've discovered kind of these, these, this, significant tragedy let's bring it out to light and show people the other face of war and i Mm -hmm. I really think that's beautiful to be able to do that when you were writing making this thing obviously getting oscar qualified is huge but i mean was that the goal or did you just kind of like realize oh my god we're doing this it it actually was the goal i don't know when the goal started i I can't say for sure it was from the like the birth of the project, but mm-hmm. somewhere pretty early on, I pretty much always set like sort of uh, I don't know if materialistic goal is the right term, but like a li- like a, an actual goal that you can ha- not just like I want to feel good about it, right? <laughs> but like an actual goal, and I usually try and set something that's a little heightened, a little high, right? Go for it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have to otherwise, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll get complacent with a project. So pretty early on, it was like, what would the ultimate goal for this be? And it would be, to, it was actually, it's actually to get Oscar nominated. Um, that's a very uh, high goal, though, particularly in terms of like a little bit what we talked about before uh, recording, yeah, which is just like the cost of, of publicity to run a, a campaign. And and there's a lot of competition, of course, out there. And there's yeah. like Disney has a short um, that is in, you know, that's being considered right now. There's a wow. couple of the big studios have stuff out this year. So, you know, I don't think people realize um, how political the Oscars can mm. be, how much money can be behind the oscars to kind of earn sway but Mm -hmm. the but the but the sure fact that out of will you have gotten this far is so admirable thank you (laughs) i'm i'm pulling i'm hoping you guys make it to nominate it or beyond because i really feel like you you're you're earning it um and also from this you know, getting kind of heat behind a project like this, are you, I, and please, if you're not comfortable with this, you don't have to answer, but are you, are you getting offers to expand this into a, into like a feature, into a series? Um, I can't say that I've gotten any like direct offers. I've definitely got a lot of inquiries, like what is, uh, wh- I think this happens a lot with shorts especially it's like well what is this actually supposed to be people are like you're not just making a short just to like say you made a short right right? like it's probably part of something bigger i think that's expected these days or assumed even if it's not true but um the 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 bigger project for me uh in its current form is in a limited series tv pilot Okay. And it's one of those things where it's like a multi generational, multi family oh, cool. war story. So it's super cool, super ambitious, but it's also like only, you know, like HBO or Amazon or somebody with, you know, $10 million yeah. could do it, um, which is not really something. Su- or so I've heard, it's not really something that's happening right now. Like they're, you know, all the big studios are just like, just give us existing IP. We can't take any risks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, after after coming back from the strikes, everybody is a little bit paranoid right now. Sure. And and, and the uh, the purse strings were already pretty tight before the strikes. And, right. and now they're like, you know, they're, they're pretty closed. So I, I totally get it. But would you be, would you want to stay in animation or would you want to build this out into, um, um, act, you know, uh, live action? Yeah, I, um, uh, originally in my mind, it was always intended to be live action. Okay. And this particular short, it was sort of a practicality and a budget thing, um, I do actually have another short in development that is, so the firebombing is my maternal grandparents. Uh, For my paternal grandparents, they actually were in Heart Mountain internment camp here in the U.S. during the same time frame. So I have, yeah, I have a short script that I'm developing for that side of the story. 
um, that is connected but separate. And so like uh, you do you would do like a same universe, you know, kind it's of same it's same universe, yeah. but the two stories won't, you know, the two short films yeah. won't connect. Not gonna happen. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one I imagine to be live action. Um, it'll still be a little challenging given the historical, the period nature of it and the hope that I can sort of have a couple of shots that show uh, the full scope of the internment camp, which would require a CGI and, and all that. But it could be so powerful, though. Yeah, that's the and, next and, step. Yeah. yeah. And where have you seen that? You know, no one's done it. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? It's so interesting. Like, you really don't see internment camp stories in the mainstream. But since yeah. I've been working on Dragonfly, I've come across, I'm trying to think, one, two, I would say maybe at least three other filmmakers um, who are on the festival circuit right now who have uh, internment camp stories or like adjacent stories, that time frame, um, Japanese right. American history. And so clearly there are people pursuing those stories in the indie market. There are indie yeah. filmmakers like... Eh, uh, and I, I presume, you know, filmmakers who identify as Japanese American, but I, I can't say for sure right. who are pursuing yeah. that. But it's just, it's like in the indie short world, it just hasn't really made it to the mainstream yet. Well, I always think indie, indies and indie shorts, you know, my um, secret sauce is if, if people go, oh, well, where is things trending? I go, where is indie right now? Because mm. indie, indie is ahead of the curve. So yeah. indie, will, indie will be trending in a certain direction and then mainstream will pick it up, usually two to five years late. Sure. But, uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see what you're talking about hitting the mainstream. Um, and so it really sounds like, you know, this this topic is going to pop in in the larger culture, which which is good. I mean, I think it's, I think it's due. I, I think that we tend to... Uh, kind of hide from some of the the atrocities we've done mm. as americans but we need to you know acknowledge and own it this affected right. entire generations of people right and i think people are more and more realizing i mean something that i i sort of that really sunk in for me in the making of dragonfly was just how when this uh this history isn't talked about it it causes history to repeat itself yeah absolutely uh, we keep seeing the same things happen over and over again and um i know it's hard because a lot of times especially like survivors of war survivors of trauma it's not like they want to go down and go and sit down with their kids and just like share about it right, right? so it's a lot of times it's like the younger generation that kind of has to poke and prod and be like hey mom hey dad hey grandma hey grandpa like yeah. what happened? Can you share about it? Can I record you? You know, just it, even if you, you don't have to go like make a film about it, but just so you know, and then you can pass it on to your kids. And so, yeah. it, you know, it, it's not entirely forgotten in three generations. But I think telling this tale um, can provide, I mean, I could be wrong on this, Julia, but I, I think it could provide a little bit of catharsis for mm families that have been through this you know kind of acknowledge like you went through this i would hope that it would provide some sense of peace and and um and at least seeing their story told sure yeah absolutely so you wrote this you directed it you got funding for it you pulled as many favors as you can <laughs> you manifested it being Oscar qualified, you've got the goal of it making a nomination. What do you have to say for other writers out there who are looking to do something but don't know what to do? Um, I think in terms of storytelling, do what you're most passionate about. Um, avoid unless it aligns, avoid what you think is going to get you noticed or what's going to get be popular or what's going to sell or what's trendy right now. Um, because especially if you are working with a low budget, if you decide to self-produce or try and connect with other independent producers, uh, it's going to be a passion project. So you don't want to be stuck for three, four, five years on a project that you were just kind of hoping would like look good. It's, yeah. it's got to be a passion project. And um, 
in terms of producing, if possible, and I know it can be such a catch-22, you know, don't wait for somebody to come, like, option your script or or buy your script. Yeah. Like, you can pursue that route. Um, you know, don't stop yourself from pursuing that route. But I always think have that second route, that fork in the road where it's like, also, what would it look like if I either tried to self-produce or connected with filmmaker friends of mine who are producers or have produced who might yeah. be interested in helping me out with this um because for me my experience so far has always been like i just kind of have to do it myself um and if i want actual results within a certain time frame right um so i i i know it can be scary it can be time consuming it can be expensive but if you have the means um, try and just, just do it yourself. Yeah. Wow. That's so powerful. And, and the fact that finding something meaningful to make is such a great note because you're right. People will be like, Oh, what am I going to do? That's trendy. That'll make me pop. And it's like, that doesn't matter if you put yourself into it. If you put your heart into it, people will see it. And that's exactly what you've done with dragonfly. Um, wow. What a great, just insight. So before I let you go, Julia, this has been actually an incredible conversation. Um, before I let you go, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Ooh. Um, hmm. Anything? I... This is my favorite question. I know. This wow. Is, this, is, this is the one. Uh, I feel like I touched on everything. Um, I'm having like an, uh, an image of my mom right now. Cause part of, <laughs> for, um, for the, uh, for the Oscar campaign, one of the things mm -hmm. that you're allowed to do, there's a lot of rules you guys, there's a lot of rules. One of the things that you're allowed <laughs> to do is include a sort of like behind the scenes sort of making a video along yeah. with your film in the Academy screening room. So, um, I shot a little behind the scenes with my mom and then uh, a couple of the other people on the team. And um, it's so interesting. There were things that I learned during this interview. This is like in September, you guys. This isn't like in 2019 when I started writing this film. This was just a couple of months ago and I oh, wow. basically interviewed her for this behind the scenes video. And, um, you know, one of the things that really surprised me is that she like I said, she knew that there was some kind of big fire that forced her parents to move out of Tokyo, but it it actually wasn't until I made this film and wrote this film, I think I shared a script with her like years ago, where she actually understood what the Tokyo firebombing was. Because wow. they didn't talk about it and they didn't teach you about it in, in school in Japan or anything like that. So that information, like I was educating my mom about her family history or what her what her family history um likely could have been since we don't have all the details um from Amazing. her parents who, yeah you know passed away many years ago um so that was surprising to me and um the other thing that i'm thinking of is so um uh in Japanese culture, but also I, I've read in, in a number of cultures, the dragonfly represents this sort of um, transformation and rebirth. Yeah. And um, uh, that's one of, that's the primary theme of, of the short film. Uh, but something that my mom told me that I thought was very funny during this interview was that she used to catch, capture dragonflies. Um, the little girl in the film is supposed to be exactly my mom running around on her parents' farm farmland. So she told me she used to capture dragonflies and she used to um, clip off their wings <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't fly away. Not because she was being awful, <laughs> because she loved dragonflies so much that she wanted to keep them. Yeah. She would build little houses for them and feed them, but she would also clip off their wings so they couldn't fly <laughs> away. And apparently they would live. They would survive for a, okay. a certain amount of time. And I just felt like there's such there's such a theme right there, too, where it's just like where you love yeah. something so you much. You can't let it go. You can't let it go. Yeah. Yeah. That it's just, such a, yeah. Julia, that took such a turn for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're leading me down this really beautiful moment. And then it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, and it's also because something in in the film that um, was important to me is I don't want it to, I didn't want it to just be like, this is so heavy and depressing. Right. It, it is. But in the front end and the back end, there's a little bit of hope. There's a little, there's a childlike play the animation is intentionally childlike um and it it sort of provides this juxtaposition for the war yeah. scene later but in the beginning and the end you know i, I wanted a little bit of lightness and yeah, then at the end great. definitely some hope so that's why yeah. i bring it back to my my mom when she was a kid in the story yeah that's awesome it's called Dragonfly. Um, Julia, best of luck to you. Break a leg. I hope it goes as far as it can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Show. Thank you. Thanks for having me.